Every forty seconds, a person who need not die, dies of their own hand. Peace is not a flower that blossoms within you, you have to enforce it. So, did this young man die only because of nepotism? After the recent death of a Bollywood star, there is a lot of debate in the country about nepotism. Some people believe it is their karma that they are born into a certain privilege. Is this true? The Mumbai cinema scene lost an upcoming star. Well, you can always… and uh, he committed suicide. Must be just over thirty years of age, I think, I'm not sure, I have not… I've only seen him now after his death, otherwise I had not heard or seen of him because I know very little about Indian cinema, I should say. <coughs> so this young man who had a, a one, I think, very successful movie, who is an upcoming star, people were looking him looking at him as a promising talent. Suddenly, one morning he commits suicide, hangs himself. So kind of people are shocked. While you are particularly aiming at nepotism, well, that could also have added to things. But you must understand, every year, Eight hundred thousand people take their own life. Between fifteen to twenty-nine years of age, suicide is one of the biggest causes of death in the world. Eight hundred thousand people per year means every forty seconds somebody is taking their own life. Why so many people want to take their own life? Because in terms of food, world is better organized than ever before. Very few nations in the world still suffer from starvation. All other places, thirty percent of the world's population is obese, that means definitely there is no starvation. But Certain part of the world, another thirty percent maybe, or another twenty percent in the world, unfortunately, are malnourished, a small number is towards starvation. In many ways, compared to any time in the history of humanity, our food is better organized. So that's not the reason for death, that people could not find food and they died. No, they're killing themselves, healthy people, well-to-do people are killing themselves. Why would any individual want to take their own life? You do one thing, go outside, find an ant. See, you try to trap him, try to act like you want to harm him. He will do everything possible to save his life, because that is the nature of life. An ant does not think, I'm just an ant, a worthless little ant, what is there if I die? That thought never occurs to him because he is programmed by nature. That life is the most significant dimension that's happening to him. Other aspects of his life, whether they're happening or not, we do not know. But he clearly knows the most fundamental and significant element of his life is life itself. Every creature in this world understands that. Only a human being, somehow, can defeat this. When your survival is in question, you also understand that. But when survival is not in question, then your psychological realities become bigger than your existential reality. Because of this, if it's wrong kind of thought process and emotions start happening, you will start moving in this direction. Well, there's a whole lot of people who constantly hitting me uh, because I said, whether you are well or ill, physically and mentally is your choice. Well, 
Sometimes you may get infected with something, infections and things that come from outside are different. But things that you generate from within is entirely your choice. You may not know how you're making the wrong choices, but knowingly or unknowingly you're making the wrong choices because all chronic sufferings that you have, physical or mental, is generated from within. Maybe it is so strongly generated, sometimes you feel helpless about it. True, I agree with that. But at the same time, how much intensity of problem do you suffer and how you suffer is definitely controllable from within. A whole lot of people go into depressed modes at various times in their lives when things don't happen the way they think it should happen. If two things today do not happen the way you want them to happen, by today evening you may be somewhat depressed. In the evening, you may sit there and talk yourself out of it, or maybe you sit with your friend and they talk to you out of it, sit with a loud one and they talk to you out of it, or you slept over it and tomorrow morning you are out of it. This is happening to a whole lot of people. But some people go into that and they are not able to come out. The slope was too steep, they could not climb up that evening or next day. They lasted for three days or five days and then they sought professional help. If you seek professional help also, in the initial stages, they are only trying to talk you out of it. You can call it a therapy, you can call it whatever. Essentially, they are trying to talk you out of it. Maybe they are professionally trained to do that, but your loved one or your friend may do it in their own way or you might do it in your own way. So I'm saying, if you have slid into a depressed state, you can be talked out of it. If somebody can talk you out of it, you can also talk yourself out of it. You must understand, staying sane is hard work because going crazy is so easy. Staying sane in every kind of situation that you face is lots of work. Somebody was asking me this question about peace. Peace is not a flower that blossoms within you. You have to enforce it. You have to enforce it, you have to make sure that you're peaceful. Otherwise, when things that you don't like happen around you, if you are exposed to the world as I'm exposed, ninety percent of the time, things that you don't like are happening all over the damn place. So to lose your peace, is very, very easy unless you learn how to enforce it. That means you've taken the faculties that you have into your hands. If your faculties of thought and emotion was in your hands, you would not go into depression. Well, why you went to depression, in what different ways circumstances pushed you into that, that is a questionable thing. In every family, when suicides happen, somebody will be feeling guilty about it because they think, oh, maybe I should not have said this. If I had not said this, it would have not happened. We don't know, maybe somebody else would have said it. Many parents have come to me like this, not one or two, many, where their teenage children have committed suicide just because they said something, you know. They said something little strongly at a certain moment, because they're not studying properly or they're not behaving properly or one little push and they just went and took their life. Parents are living with that suffering for the rest of their lives because they keep on thinking it's because of me, I shouldn't have said it. But there is no such thing that you can say all kinds of things and nothing will happen. At one moment you say something, and somebody could do this because all they needed was that little trigger. So, did this young man die only because of nepotism? I don't know. I don't know the man, but I don't think so. But did that also play a role, possibly in his mind, because he felt he was put into a, an unfair level of uh, competition. You cannot compete with somebody who are privileged 
who are entitled in some way, anyway they will get what they have to get irrespective of their talent or their capabilities and you have to strive maybe doubly hard. Well, that's how it is for all of us who are not born with a crown on our heads, that we always have to strive doubly harder, ten times harder than other people. It could be because of your, uh, you know, because you don't have your uncle in a godfather's place, or your skin color is not right, or you don't belong to the right caste or religion. Everywhere we are facing this all the time and every human being faces this at various levels, in different ways. Some will overcome it, some will strive and fly beyond that, some will suffer that. Some unfortunately take their life, which should not happen. I would say this taking of the life is mainly because our education systems have nothing. Nothing means absolutely nothing at all in the whole process of growing up as to how a human being should handle his or her faculties, how they should address themselves. It's all about fixing the world, it's all about knowing about the galaxies out there, about every atom in the universe, all kinds of stuff, not a thing about this one. For that we are paying a price as a generation. Eight hundred thousand people, every forty seconds, a person who need not die, dies of their own hand. This is the worst trage tragedy that's happening in the world and people are expecting these numbers will rise in the next ten years in a big way. Whatever that big way is, if eight hundred thousand is not big enough, what is big, I don't know. This is mainly because there is no system teaching how to manage your chemistry. This is why yoga, this is why inner engineering is so significant. If you just learn to think and feel the way you want, this will not happen in your life. This should not happen in anybody's life because as it is, it's a brief life. It's not for you to end it. Time will come for that. For all this, the fundamental thing is, you must become a blissful chemistry. If this one thing, if you work for, if you provide tools for every human being on this planet to make this happen, now we're starting a movement in uh, Tamil Nadu, once this pandemic threat goes away reasonably, we will start this in village to village, town to town. As a simple practice of Surya Shakti, how to manage your energies the way you want. If your energies are exuberant, you will not take your life, they've become feeble. They might not have become feeble because of physiological conditions, they've become feeble, surprised by the weight of your psychological stuff. Because of that, energies have become feeble. If you had just learnt how to think and feel the way you want, this would never have occurred to you in your life. This must happen that whether everybody will attain to their ultimate or not, we do not know. We will strive. But everybody, this much… This, this much must happen, that their experience of life in whatever little things that they're doing in their life must be pleasant. This we can definitely achieve. If every one of you stand up and strive, this is very much possible that we can create a generation where their experience of life is pleasant. They need not imbibe any chemicals in the form of drugs, alcohol or this or that. Simply to sit here peacefully and blissfully, every human being should be capable of this because this much awareness and intelligence is invested in every human being.